Hello, this introductory presentation on equity valuation shows how to determine the value of a preferred stock. And I begin here by laying out some of the basic characteristics of a preferred stock, which include the fact that it pays equal dividends indefinitely. And so this uh, qualifies it to be referred to as a perpetuity. Right? A perpetuity is an investment that makes equal payments and the period is uh, undefined. Secondly, preferred stockholders receive their dividends after the bondholders have received their interest. So they are second in rank in terms of compensation. However, they receive their compensation before the common stockholders who are at the bottom of the barrel, so to speak. And so since dividends grow at a zero rate, meaning they stay the same from period to period, we're going to use the present value of a perpetuity formula, which is summarized right here. It's the simplest valuation formula because it simply divides the fixed payments that you're going to be receiving each period by the required rate of return. All the terms are defined right here. And so as an example, if a preferred stock promises to pay $1.80 per period per year in this case and you require a return of 12.5 percent using the present value of a perpetuity formula and defining it specifically for a preferred stock where the fixed cash flow payment is the preferred stock dividend D sub P and the rate of return here are required on a preferred stock is defined to be RP you know plugging in and playing we find the price to be fourteen dollars and forty cents and so as I note down here, if you wanted to earn 12.5% rate of return on this stock investment, then what this means is you shouldn't pay more than this $14.40 to buy the stock. Now, if on the other hand, you strike out and you're able to uh, negotiate and pay a price lower than 14.40, then of course you're going to wind up with a higher return than this 12.5%. So as an example of that, now given the same uh, dividend per share, suppose you're able to pay $13 per share to buy this stock. So from this present value of a perpetuity formula, we can solve for RP algebraically to come up with this, which is the ratio of the fixed dividend and the price that you've paid. So this whole thing comes out to be 15%. So as you can see, because you're able to wind up paying less than the price you originally calculated of 14.4 at this rate of return, because you wound up paying $13 because you might have negotiated a little bit more forcefully, so to speak. I don't know how that could have happened. In any event, you wind up enjoying a much higher rate of return. All right, so here's your practice. Suppose the preferred stock pays annual dividends of 2.8 and your required return is 17.5. What's the price, all right? What's the value? So I've laid out the input for you here, a reminder of the valuation formula. And then secondly, it says if you wound up paying 22 bucks for this preferred stock, what would be your rate of return? And again, here's your input and here's your uh, working formula right there. All right, and that's it.